All right, we are here once again, Life Lessons Live with the crew, with Bishop Calvin Razzi as our special guest on today, and we're excited to be here. Uh, you know, we believe here that uh, conversations birth new seasons, and that's what we're here to do. Uh, this is a no judgment zone. We're not here to be critical. We're here to share uh, some wisdom uh, as we have learned uh, and what we've come to know. And we want everybody to have a successful life, a prosperous life, and and uh, for this world, for our children and ourselves to be uh, what God wants it to be. And so we're here. We want you to join in with us. Uh, you can join in by commenting in the comment section. Please share with your family members and friends and join in this conversation because that's what we want you to do. Join in, join in, join. Let's talk. Let's talk about some things. Let's be uh, uh, conversational. Uh, and and um, we're not afraid of uh, confrontation. In other words, you don't have to be in agreement with us to comment. OK, that's not what we're here for. And again, we're not here to judge anybody. We're not here to be critical. We're here to have a conversation. I believe when we can come to a place of understanding, we can all grow. We can all grow. Uh, we can all learn to think and and uh, and be better. OK, so listen, I want them to introduce themselves to you today. Again, you're listening to Life Lessons Live. You're watching Life Lessons Live with the crew and uh, Bishop Calvin. Let them know who you are, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good to be here with you again, Bishop. I'm Bishop Kelvin Ramsey, a pastor of the Spirit of Excellence Ministries located in Oxford, Mississippi, where I've been pastoring. The, this will be 20 years. Uh, Come on. Here. I'll be celebrating my 20th year pastoring uh, this awesome church. And uh, it, it's a blessing uh, to be with you, Bishop. Let, let me just say this right before you move on. Okay. I love your topic, uh, uh, your, your, your topic of your show about conversations. Yeah. I was thinking even before I came on how Jesus was very conversational. And you, you look at two scriptures and I'm doing this real quick. You look at two scriptures where he had a conversation with mm -hmm. Nicodemus. And the next chapter, he had a conversation with the woman at the well. Come so on. he was he was always in conversation, trying to bring clarity. So I want to I want to give a shout out to you for this awesome platform that you have. It's awesome. Hey Amen. We're humbled by that. We're thankful for that, and uh, we believe it. We believe that in our heart, Bishop. I really yeah. do believe that. Now you're right, and you're I right. I believe that. I believe it. Jesus modeled it. I caught it. I believe success leaves clues, and <laughs> and I believe it. I want to have a conversation with you. I'm, I'm not I'm not judging you. I'm not critical. Um, I want to come to understand it. Stephen Covey says this and it helped me in the seven. Um, uh, what is it called, Stephanie? The seven, seven habits, habits of highly effective people, people. seven habits of highly effective people seek to understand before wanting to be understood. Mm. It yeah. never requires a conversation, yeah. Bishop. It really, really does. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for that, That's Bishop. Good. Stephanie, tell them who you are. Hey, guys. Hey, world. Uh, Stephanie Monique here from Tupelo, Mississippi, uh, educator and mentor, entrepreneur as well, and um, excited to be a part of the team. Um, a sister, a servant, a worshiper, most importantly, uh, a student. You never Amen. stop growing. Amen. That's it. That's it. I believe that when you stop learning, you stop growing. You know, you stop learning, you stop growing. And that's what we don't want to do. That's we want to keep on. And when you stop growing, you stop leading. Mm. Okay. You stop leading. So listen, we've been talking about the power of music. OK. And we cannot underestimate its power. And then, again, we're not here just being negative. But we're going to also we're going to talk about some things that music create some negative things. And they can also create some very positive things. Stephanie, you mentioned last week that there is something called music therapy. Yes, you know, music therapy. That is powerful. That is positive. Yeah. Okay. But we also found that the sources in which it come from can produce uh, a negative effect. Uh, one thing that I, I think of is that the source in which it comes from, uh, whether it be righteous or unrighteous. The word of God says that we should yield our members to righteousness and not unrighteousness. And we can't be afraid of that word, Bishop. We can't be afraid of righteousness. Oh, no. You know, that's what God calls me. That's why he gave his son and he calls us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we need to talk about it. What does that mean? 
I'm going to have right way of thinking, right way of feeling, right way of behaving. I'm going to em embrace the virtues of God. I'm going to be morally uh, responsible and things of that nature. OK, and we can do that through Christ. Yes. We OK. Can. You know, we all uh, have been born in sin, you know, in iniquity, and we all need to confess Christ. So, again, we're not trying to point the finger at this one or that one. We all need to learn. We all need to grow. And uh, again, a law process is you develop daily, not in a day. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. But we also have to learn Christ. We got to learn what, what God's expectations of us is and how he afforded us the ability to live up to those expectations. And so when we start talking about the power of words and the power of music, we got to make sure that we are being le we're learning from the right places. Mm. Uh, we mentioned last week about old school, new school, and uh, really that's a play on words. And we talked about old school is really the wisdom of God, which we know the word says that heaven and earth is going to pass away, but his word shall not. OK, will always stand. And then you got the wisdom of man or the wisdom of this world. Right. And so we got to know where, where is the source of this music coming from? And it is teaching. And I'm just kind of throwing this out so we can talk a little bit. We know that that music does teach. I can remember teaching a toddler how to learn their ABCs, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. And you song, you put a melody on it. Right. Mm -hmm. You put a rhythm to it and people learn that way. Mm -hmm. And so some people are, are learning wrong things because it's coming from wrong sources with wrong agendas. OK, and it's coming from wicked places. Sometimes they, they don't even know it's wicked because of the lack of their understanding or revelation of God or knowledge of truth. And sometimes people do know what it's doing. They know what it's doing and it's intentional, but because of materialism and greed and whatever's popular and whatever can go and sell, people do it anyway. Okay? Right. Last week we defined music um, as an art of, of sound and time that expresses ideas and emotions in significant forms through the elements of rhythm, melody, harmony, and even color. Okay. And music can also be any sweet, pleasing, or harmonious sound or sounds. So as I said, in teaching, uh, we, we teach ABCs with the rhythm and the songs. I remember old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, yeah. yeah. teaching about the animals and things of that nature. So music can be very positive, okay? But it also can be have some negative effects. Last week, Bishop, you talked about how it can affect a person's mood. Yes. Okay. And their behavior. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw some of those things out. And I want to hear from you all today talking about the power of music. I want to listen to you, you that are watching or listening as well. Comment in the comment section and mm -hmm. let us know your thoughts and comments yeah. on these things. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I was thinking about today, Bishop, and I'm, I don't think we mentioned it on last week, is the uh, subliminal messages that, that music green wow the message behind the song you know it, it's really saying it's you're hearing one thing but it's really suggesting something else and if you don't catch that it, okay. it, it hits your spirit and next thing you know you're doing these things that is suggesting and that's just not in music that's in commercials all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff that bring out these subliminal messages and uh we talked about last week about that hard rock and heavy metal Mm -hmm. uh, it was played backwards not only did it give demonic sounds but it gave uh, uh things to say like one of them said kill yourself mm -hmm. and uh many have committed suicide because and not even know why but okay. uh, that's part of the power of music okay that's good stephanie I'm sorry for the delay. Please forgive me. I was just thinking the same thing on the on the lines of what Bishop Rancy was just saying, the motive behind the music. And, and so, like you're saying, those subliminal messages. Um, I can remember this song and I don't know who sings it, but I, I just want to say these few words. And it's the song said, um, they say I'm no less uh, than a penny with a hole in it. Mm. Oh. I remember that song and, and I remember the 
I like beats and I like music. I was in the band, okay? So uh, I like beats and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so, uh, you know, the beat machine, that, those things, like, I like that, okay? And so when I started, like, understanding what the words were saying, and again, for me, it's about listening to the words and what they are saying because words are seeds. And like Bishop Ramsey was saying, those things get planted in your spirit, man. And uh, and then you start growing these things out into your life. And um, when you really listen to that song, okay, and you say that, you're saying that you're worthless. Worthless, wow. you know, with a hole in it. Like, yeah. you know, and, and that's totally opposite uh, than what your vision should be for your life. Um, you know, so just understanding the motive and the words that you're saying for me, that's a whole shift. That's a pan, that's a whole shift. That's a whole nother playing field. Mm -hmm. Because again, those words, God created the world with words. And for us, it's about us confessing. Okay. And so knowing what you're saying, life and death lies in the power of your tongue. So what are you listening to? I know what you put in is what you get out. Yes. That's good. Um, and, and, and we know, as Bishop Ramsey says, subliminal messages, um, you can get caught up in the beat mm -hmm. um, and you're not paying attention to the words. Mm -hmm. And when you're not paying attention to the words, the words are what's penetrating your spirit. And yep. as we mentioned on last week, you may not. You just like the beat. I've heard people say, I just like the beat. I just like the music. I just yep. like the beat. And they don't even know what's being said. But yet that's what's affecting you, you know, and you look up and you and and, and it has changed the way you feel, the way you think. OK, the way you behave and you don't even know why you're behaving that way. Wow. Uh, have you ever been in a place where you I've been sitting in a restaurant, per se, sitting in a restaurant and you know how the restaurants have music playing and, you know, and something will come on. And the next thing you know, you, you, you're you rocking to it, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's yeah. causing you to, yeah. to to move different and to do things uh, or it brings up past memories. OK. Yeah, it brings up past memories. It, it brings up past emotions. Come Hello. on, it triggers those things. And it brings triggers those, those things to your fore mind. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it triggers, and we we want to let you all know. Stephanie has a degree in psychology. Okay, so so when she's talking about these things, she's not just shooting from the hip. These are not our opinions. OK, these are our experiences and studied knowledge that we come through, either through the scriptures, through life's experiences, through education. OK, so again, we're not being judgmental. We're not being critical. We're trying to enlighten everyone's understanding because my heart goes out to the way society is looking today. Bishop Ramsey, I'm not a I'm not willing to just overlook because. You know, they're talking about how many billionaires has come out of this pandemic. They're talking about the opportunities to make money, mm -hmm. you know, but yet I see the morality of people at an all time low to me. Anything yeah. goes now. People yeah. are bold enough to say anything, to do anything right in right in people's face, yeah. you know, with no type of conviction, no type of reverence. Uh, of God or listen, even other people, you know, uh, you got younger people who who if you listen to certain things all the time, they don't respect elders anymore, you know, disrespect themselves. Right. You know, you see things like young ladies revealing their bodies in public, standing on tables and restaurants and shaking their behinds because of what the music is telling them to do and all of that. And where, where does that, you know, it's become a culture, it's become, the, the, it's, it's grabbed a hold to them and has affected the way that they think and feel about themselves. Bishop, that was embarrassing. Come on, Bishop. Yeah, let, let, me, let me, I wanna, I, that is so true, Bishop. I wanna go back to what you was talking about, the beat. Because because what you said is so true. So the enemy throws the beat in there and it's a worldly beat. They don't listen to the words. 
Okay. So, like you said, they're ingesting all this stuff and they're not paying attention. But watch this. Then he throws the beat into gospel music. Mm -hmm. Come on. So that they don't listen to the words of gospel music. So then it doesn't do them any good because all they're worried about is the beat. It's the beat. See, yeah. so, so the enemy is very, he, he's slick. Like, like we all said, he was the master of music. He had yeah. organs in him, so he knows the power of music. And uh, and so he knows the power of words. So if I can get them in the beat, don't listen to the words. Next thing you know, you act in a fool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just, that's just the truth. Yes. Yeah? And, and it's from either side, gospel and because you're in the beat. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And and as I said, we're not just beating up on what we would call secular music or worldly music. Oh, wow. We're also talking about the genre of gospel Come because on. it has it has crept into our worship places of worship. Absolutely, it has crept into our our library or our catalog of music that we're listening to. Right? Are uh, there are people that are that will say their gospel that really doesn't have a reverence of God and just can know that they can get out of it what they want to get out of it um, um, and are really, as you said, Bishop, uh, they, they, they are, are selling something other than what Christ would want them to to be projecting. Exactly. OK. Uh, and and how do how do those things happen? We've got to talk about righteousness. We got to talk about what we should be yielding ourselves to as believers that we might be able to influence others, generations and, and uh, people from all walks of life, even those who have the giftings of music in them, musicians and singers and all those types of things. And I, I, I believe in my heart when there's not uh, the right teaching out there mm -hmm. and the right standards out there, um, and accountability and not just saying, don't do that, don't do that, but taking the time that they can learn why they shouldn't do these types of things, right. that they might see what is the, the advantages and disadvantages or of this, that, or the other. Yes. That's good, Bishop. And I, I was thinking as you were saying that, uh, and uh, Stephanie, you can probably help me out on this, too. Uh, when you listen to music, the question comes to mind. What does it make you want to do? Yeah. Good. Come on. Bitch. What yeah. does that music make you want to do? Now, that's even in gospel or, or, or secular music, uh, because if you listen to gospel music and it's making you want to dance instead of worship, then it, it's not really doing what it was designed to do. Right. So, right. You know, a real gospel song, a real worship wor worship song, whether with the beat or not, makes you want to worship God. Mm -hmm. So what, what do y'all think about that? I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah. What does it make you want to do? Yeah. I believe that that's how we can determine whether or not a person has yielded their members to righteousness mm -hmm. or unrighteousness. Is it going to cause me to think like I need to think, feel the way that I need to feel? And mm -hmm. where did I get that standard of how I should think and how it should feel come from? So are they talking about this is what God desires from us or are they leaving it very vague so that, you know, you can interpret it however you want to? I believe that's a compromise. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. talked about some of our gospel artists who, for the sake of making music, were instructed that they could not use the name of Jesus. That's they right. could not talk about God. So their gospel music sounded like, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, love songs. Yes. yes. It sounded like love songs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't, they couldn't mention Jesus because it was in their contract. Right. Right. Okay. So, so that wasn't making me think about him. I could be thinking about someone I don't need to be thinking about. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Feeling the way I shouldn't feel, you know, yeah. because if we, we're talking about God. We're talking about Jesus. If a feeling tries to go run off the rails and then they call on the name of Jesus, you'd be like, oh, oh, OK, I was going somewhere. I don't need to be going, you know, because it's <laughs> causing you to feel this way or that way. And, and, and it should be talking about God, talking about his son, Jesus, and you thinking about a man or a woman, 
Okay. Yeah. And and, and that's not what but we the, should be thinking about the, at that the, time. The, yeah. the song out there uh, that was titled, and, and again, I'm not throwing off on these people, but the name of the song was I'm Lost Without You. Okay. Okay. Um, so so that song, you know, it's easy to see I'm lost without you. Okay. So who is you? Who is you? Yeah. <laughs> What you, what you are you talking about? So that's called Save myself. Yeah, come on, I know what you're talking about. Come on, come on, Stephanie. What you you can t- you can turn that to anybody, and that's yes, that's called can. crossover. It can go either way, and and, and God, we got to draw that line of demarcation, man. If we're gonna sing gospel, that's my well, opinion. That's my opinion. Well, we've we've got to know who's teaching us, who's teaching us. What school did this come from? Is this the wisdom of God or is this the wisdom of man or the wisdom of this world? Right. Okay. And we we established that media, social as well as conventional media, media is a source of teaching. Okay. Yes. Music is a source of teaching. Then you have learned and unlearned people that are teaching. Okay. Learned and unlearned. And we got to make sure that we are submitting ourselves to the learned. And not the unlearned. Right. Okay. We used this word before we came on air, Bishop. We talked about the word ignorance. It's not a bad word. It just simply means someone who doesn't know. Okay. Right. Someone who doesn't know. And um, we need to know, or we should be discerning, and we should qualify uh, certain things. Mm-hmm. Okay. We should qualify things. Parents should qualify things for their children. That's right. Okay. That's right. Know what they're listening to. Know know who's teaching them. Know what's influencing them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stephanie, yeah. you were going to say something. Yes, sir. I was going to say when Bishop Ramsey said, um, what does the music make you want to do? Um, that's so in line with what I was thinking because I wanted to ask you, what are the boundaries? You know, because we're talking about music, um, you know, worship music, praise music. And then I remember when I would go to certain environments, such as the club. OK, OK. Or, uh, <laughs> right. And I would hear um, gospel artists being played. OK. I was like, wait a minute. This is the wrong scene. Like, what are we doing here? And so. That whole crossover thing. So I love when you said the boundaries. What does it make you want to do? Um, You know, a couple of songs that I can remember. uh, You know, shackles off my feet so I can dance. We they used to play that in the club, and we we would not stop dancing the way that we were dancing just because of who was singing the song. The Mm. beat again. We're talking about the beat. What what does it make you want to do? The drive of that beat. It was the same as. You know, uh, throw your set up. You know, it, it was the same beat that that was going on this in the atmosphere. And so, and I think that that's good. What does it make you want to do? Mm-hmm. And also realizing that, um, you know, as we're talking about the genre of gospel, um, some artists that are singing in the uh, gospel genre, they also have R and B music, um, such as Miley music. He's a um, quote unquote gospel artist, but he also has certain love songs that are out um, and certain R&B songs. And so just understanding, you know, the motive. And like you said, what does it make you want to do? You know, uh, I saw some of the comments. You can tell, you know, where the person's heart is or where their mind is, you know, by the, the way the song is produced or the words. And so all of those things. So the boundaries. That's so good. where are they? getting these boundaries from, you know, where do we get them from? Uh, Are we going to compromise those things or why do we think, you know, if we were to put a finger on it or, 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 you know, why does society look like it? Look, why did this artist want to want their music to be played in the club too? You know, you really that's, that's a great point bishop uh <laughs> what, happens, what what i believe is these uh musicians who want their music played they may say it for one reason but uh the bottom line is a lot of time it's money you know and, and then and because it's money they're gonna bishop they set their own boundaries 
You know, oh, wow. it, it's like the word of God doesn't count when I want to set my own boundary. Mm. I can, you know, one person said, how close can you get to the edge without falling over? And another person said, well, why would you want to get close to the edge? <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Why would you want to risk falling over when you can stay away from it and be safe? Well, yeah. that's, what, that's where we're at in society. People want to know how close can we get to the fence without going over it? Can you have both feet on both sides of the fence? And that's an old saying. And, and, and certainly you can't, Bishop. It's just That's just the way it is. Well, the Bible says if you if you, either you hot or you cold. That's what he said. If you look warm, I'll That's spew you out of my mouth. Yes, okay? sir. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. That's it. Okay. Yes, yes Stephanie. But we we because I've had this conversation and a response to me, and, and I want to submit it to the to the board today. The response <laughs> is, is that. Um, you know, we're reaching the younger generations or we're touching them. You know, their style of music is different from our style of music. OK, That's I would address that as is this methods may change, but the message don't change. Absolutely. So why are you not talking about Jesus? OK, and if you can talk about Jesus in a worshipful heart and still have that beat and I can still discern the anointing, I don't have a problem with a beat as long as I sense his presence. If there's no presence, that means he ain't in it. Yes. Okay. And if you take his name out, then you putting your presence on it and we've removed his. So now you reaching them for your benefit and not because you did this because it was the Lord's leading. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. Yeah. I wrote, I wrote a song uh, that's got a beat to it. It's called Hold On To Your Faith. Mm -hmm. And the song really has a, has a drive and a nice beat. But yeah. the whole message is encouraging. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, at the end, it's driving to say, you can make it. You yeah. can make it. You know, hold on to your faith. And right. so that song ought to encourage you. And, and if it, it came from the uh, anointing of encouragement. So mm -hmm. I, a lot of people say, well, when I listen to that song, I get encouraged. That's yeah. what it's designed to do. It ain't designed to make you dance like you're in the world. It's designed to, to, to encourage your heart. To encourage your heart. That goes yeah. back to the source of where it's coming from, Bishop. Yeah, yeah. And it's intent. The intent is, is, the intent. Is, is to advance the kingdom. Yes. To promote right ways of thinking. God wants you encouraged. He mm -hmm. wants you to hold on to faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. Everything that comes out of the kingdom comes through by faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. So you're, you're, you're talking about these things, you know, and so, you know, OK, well, that's that's a source. That source there is a is a is a, is a worshiper, mm -hmm. one whose intention was to promote Jesus, promote the, the ways of God, the will of God for a person's life. And I believe that that's how we got to look at the boundaries. OK, yeah. it's kind of like what we do when we talk about mission statements. Mm -hmm. Is this is this fulfilling the mission statement? If it's not fulfilling the mission statement, then we got to throw it out. I don't care how good it sounds. I don't care how successful it might be. Yes. If you're committed to Christ and committed to God. OK, you won't let that be the determining factor of whether or not you're going to do a thing or not do a thing. Mm -hmm. OK, because I, I believe that that's that's making him Lord. Yes. OK. Yes. All right. Yeah. Because we got to he's got to be savior and Lord. Mm -hmm. Savior and Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Bishop, we 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 have a standard and we don't like to talk about that no more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There is a standard to, to, to living right. There's a standard and it's called holiness. And oh my. We 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 don't like to talk about that now because we think holiness is a denomination. <laughs> we think holiness is a sanctified church, but people run around and speak in tongue. That ain't holiness, Bishop. Right. Holiness is clean living. It's mm -hmm. living so as to please God. And so you gotta ask the question: is the things I'm doing, even in my songs, are they pleasing God? Yeah. If he's the audience, if he's in the audience, is he pleased with what I'm doing? Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. So I want to address that. And that goes back to that this thing, Bishop. We can't, we got to deal with it. Ignorance, mm -hmm. just not knowing. 
Do we even know? Remember, we talked about the power of words in the church. Have we defined these words properly? Mm. Or is the enemy using them against the church to cause an alienation from God rather than drawing people to God? My God. Misunderstood words is a learning barrier. Mm. So then you give the opportunity for something else to teach people. Right. So now you've got all many that are alienated from God because of misunderstandings, lack of knowledge, bad experience or whatever. And many times it's because they didn't understand what they had uh, uh, submitted themselves to. Many wanted to follow Christ until they found out what their responsibilities were. And then they said, well, we didn't come for all of that. Uh -huh. we, we didn't come for all of that. So right. deuces, we, we're going to leave and go there. And that's OK. You know what I'm saying? As powerful as Paul was, they, the church at Athens rejected him. Yep. They rejected him. Yes, they did. Okay? The people in Athens rejected him. This man wrote two thirds of the New Testament and they yet still rejected him. They rejected Jesus. OK, they rejected Jesus. So that's a part of our stand in righteousness. And as you say, wanting to please God, mm -hmm. everybody's not going to accept it. And that's OK. But yeah. what you do have to know is that I have committed my ways unto the Lord. And this I know is what he expects from me as I have confessed uh, uh, Christ to be my savior and Lord. And I think we got to talk about the Lordship. I think we got we got to talk about that because yeah. that's a conscious decision that we got to make. Mm -hmm. We're making decisions every day and we got to know what's influencing my decisions. Yeah, that's good. Bishop. Media, social as well as conventional. OK, as you said, real subtle, Bishop Ramsey, yes. you're in the grocery store and you got little jingles going on. And, and listen, somebody walked by with a T-shirt um, on and, and, and that's all marketing. That's all, marketing. you know. That's yeah, that's it's true. all marketing. It's yeah. representing something. Yeah. You, okay. you mentioned something earlier, Bishop, about how you could be in a restaurant and, you know, your head gets the and you're not even conscious that you're moving to the beat. And I, this happened to me when I was playing in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I, I had confessed Christ, you know. So when you confess Christ, you're always being watched. You're all, oh, yeah. The worldly people who ain't trying to live right now, but they're going <laughs> to judge. <laughs> they're going to judge the Christ by you. So we had, we had a timeout, and this song comes on. And before I know it, I'm... I'm kind of beaten and you know, and they and I had at least six guys looking at me. Okay. Like, man, said, you dancing. <laughs> you, you dancing. <laughs> and before I do it, I said, no, no, I'm not dancing. But it, it, it lets you know how close they scrutinize us. Okay. Oh, wow. And they watch us, and we gotta be careful not to send the wrong signals Ooh. to the people who are trying to find the Lord. Mm -hmm. you know? We've got to be careful how, even how we moved. You know, the, the old choirs used to move side to side. You remember? Know I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the mother said, "If you put a rock in there, do you go? You, you better go to the altar." <laughs> <laughs> so, so they were they were trying to protect holiness, Bishop. That's what they were trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I believe, I believe that teaching to teach to teach is our greatest weapon against ignorance. Mm. We have to teach. We got to understand words. We've got to not, um, the other thing I learned in education is skip gradients. We have people that got born again, but didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm. We got people that got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, but they don't study the word. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have no word. They haven't renewed their mind. And whether they realize it or not, these different sources of learning or teaching from media, social, conventional music and unlearned people uh, is teaching them. That has become their schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. OK, so now you haven't renewed your mind uh, and therefore it hadn't cleansed your heart either. Right. So there's still uh, things from your former position of not being born again 
uh, having sinful nature and our flesh is the only part of us that has no holy influence upon it. That's right. So you got to put your flesh in subjection. Right. And that's going to come through you dealing with the weakness that is in your soul, your mind, your will and your emotions. And if you listen, uh, many things are emotional. Uh, it's tapping into people's emotions. Even sometimes when I listen to gospel music, I say, why are they singing such a sad song? Mm -hmm. You know, why are they begging? Uh, please, please, please. You know, <laughs> you know, please, please, please. I, I want to live right. I want to live right. When when we have to confess Christ and renew our mind, right. and when we change our mind, transformation happens. That's what the Apostle Paul taught us. And I think that we've got to deal with these factors, these things that is causing uh, alienation and disconnect from the life that Christ has afforded us. Right. I believe that holiness will be guarded and protected through gaining the knowledge of God. Uh, Second Peter one and two says that grace and peace is multiplied towards us. And, and I may not be quoting it exactly correct. Yeah. When we grow in the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, that's a clue right there. Yeah, it is. You know, that holy influence, grace, a holy influence upon one's life to want to live for Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to define words and we've got to know how do we obtain all of what Christ has afforded us. And uh, that's a part of our participation. And that's what we have to teach because the world is teaching all the time. Right. All the time. But the wisdom of God many times in people's lives is very minimal. And we got to address these things. That's right. That's right. Oh, Stephanie, you want to say something? Go ahead, Stephanie. Yes, Stephanie. It, it goes back to a, 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 a few uh, sentences ago, but um, you were talking about just in the different genres and um, the, the boundaries being crossed and um, not standing for holiness. And what I wanted to say was that's going to cause a lot of people to um, what I want to say, uh, to settle, to not settle for mediocrity and to really be able to understand and know what kingdom they're operating in. Mm -hmm. And so as you're talking about, you know, the social media, you know, the seven mountains of influence, mm -hmm. so knowing that um, entertainment is uh, a kingdom mm -hmm. and these gospel artists, artists in general, period, are operating in that kingdom. And so you got to make a decision. Um, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. And so it, is Christ going to be my Lord? And as you're talking about understanding, you know, what words mean and what it means to have a standard of holiness and knowing that because I am a singer or a musician or whatever the case may be, you know, I'm not going to compromise. So there is a, a point of decision now where we got to choose whether we're going to compromise and get the money and get all of the people to like us and, you know, to be popular, you know, or are we going to make a stand for Christ and not allow our standards to be watered down? Because Christ, the kingdom, the gospel, the word of God is not going to be watered. It, it's not going to be watered down. OK, and we got to stop making excuses, you know, and just tell the truth. Okay. Uh, I, I like doing what I'm doing and I like where I am and I'm good with it. And, and let's stop, you know, lying, talking about God ain't done with me yet. Yeah. <laughs> you, oh, my. You complete and you were complete and everything that it, that you need to be successful, according to God's way, is already on the inside of you. Um, we just need to make sure that we're developed and that we're we already been equipped. We just got to do some development. And so just understand that um, you have to make a choice. And you got to make a decision. And as you're talking about teaching, um, you need to know what kingdom you're uh, operating in, what is influencing you. So, again, it goes back to what's teaching me, you know, what's driving me. I should be led, not driven. And so when you find yourself being driven, music, words, those beats, they will drive you to do things. And, um, and so you shouldn't be driven to do anything. You should be led. Scripture Inspired. says, "Fire, yeah, yeah." Scripture says that we are led by yeah. the Holy Spirit. 
Yes. Yeah. Let me say this also is that to, to me, when you have the anointing of the Holy Ghost in you, I, I've given this um, analogy to my people many times. It, it acts as a, um, I would say like a, um, what's those things that catch the the the, the police, uh, the, the speed armor thing that catches the police? Radar. Radar, yeah. It, it acts like a radar. It, it, it beeps when things are not of God. Mm -hmm. It lets you know that, hold up, something ain't right. This, mm -hmm. this, and this is this is not just with music. This is with the word of God. This is with anything that doesn't agree with the anointing. The anointing lets you know. At least he lets me know. Hey, Kelvin, that ain't me. Yeah. You know, that that music that is not me. And yeah. it doesn't register in my spirit as a song from the right source does. So that's a clue. That's a key, Bishop. That's a clue. So that goes back right there. Are we skipping gradients? Mm. Are we making sure? Are we doing diligence about making disciples of men? Okay, you're born again. But then the apostles went down and said, well, have you received since you believed? Oh, um, my. Come on, Bishop. Okay. And, and, and they're responsible. We had not even heard nothing about the Holy Ghost. Right. Okay. And so we've got to make sure that gradients isn't skipped. They gifted and they talented, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. So they don't have no radar in them. Right. They don't have the spiritual gifting of discernment in them. OK. Mm. And many times we are blow past stop signs, I call it. Oh, you gifted and you talent. And we hadn't done due diligence of making sure you're born again, your spirit oh. feel, you're renewing your mind. OK. And that never stops. Cause I'm still doing it after 30 something years. Yes, sir. Okay. Renewing yes, my sir. mind and listen at this and I'm mature enough to be led by a spirit. What happens is we put loose people in their immaturity and then they're tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. And that's how these kingdoms get a hold of them because we tell them they're great and they hadn't even matured yet. That's true. Because we base it on talent and gifting Hello, because sometimes our agenda is not in line with God's agenda, which is to make disciples of men. That's true. And so we guilty in that with the church. Mm. We're guilty in that in the world. OK, there's a particular artist out here right now that's struggling, struggling, struggling. OK, they were wrong to loose that girl into gospel artistry. Mm. Wow. They were wrong. It was immature. Mm -hmm. It was premature. Shouldn't have done that. Money makes you more of what you are. Power and popularity makes you more of what you are. Crashed and burned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Crashed and burned. And so that's an injustice towards people. We got to make sure that we are submitting ourselves to what God wants, not trying to pull off religious agendas however you want to call it there's cause there's a kingdom of religion too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. we got to make sure the kingdom of God understanding what it is, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy ghost as the scripture tells in Romans 14, 17. And so is righteousness at the, at the forefront of what we're doing, what we're, what we're, uh, what we're sound like, what we look like, because it's a sound. What we sound like, what we look like is producing a right feeling, a right way of thinking, a right way of behaving. Is it is it is it uh, operating in the virtues of God? Is this out of the spirit of God? OK, that's good. Bishop. And, and those are all measurements or, or, or standards or as you called it, Bishop, I believe you said boundaries. Mm -hmm. These are all the boundaries that we should be using measuring stuff. Even when I'm listening to something, okay, I want to I'm I want to discern first of all where this come from, okay. It may be a jazz piece, all right. As you said, jazz music. You got to watch that because yeah. the intent of the musician that's playing it determines whether or not even a song with no lyrics is is good or bad. That's true. Okay? I was going to ask you this, Bishop. You're you're a you're a musician, right? Yes, you, sir. You're sharing with us last week that. You know, since you were four years old, you had a sense of music, yes. piano, uh, guitar, drums, yes. different instruments, right? 
Yes, sir. What makes a cord anointed? What, what makes a cord anointed? Yeah. That's that's good. Uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, the cords uh, got to be in harmony. In okay. other words, there are certain chords that go with certain other chords that make the harmonious sound. Okay. You can hit the wrong key on on a on a on a keyboard that's designed to bring harmony, but if you hit the wrong key, uh -huh. it brings disharmony. Uh huh. So, so the first thing is to make sure that the keys are being hit and that the keys that cause that harmony to take place. But the next thing is that the person playing it. Okay, come on, teachers, okay. bitch. The person playing it must carry the anointing be before the music can be anointed. Okay. You, you got those two things that are critical, that a person is skilled enough to hit the right chords. Okay. That's, that's why the Lord said, do it according to my will. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Okay. That, that comes in harmony with my will. Okay. But then you got to be anointed as David was to play the harp. Anybody couldn't play the harp. The devil out of Saul. They took okay. the anointed man of God to struggle to get the devil out. So come on. That's in a nutshell. <laughs> now, now listen at this, Bishop. Listen at this. So if the person playing the chord is in disharmony with God, that chord don't sound right. Does that it? is correct. That is so correct. it might sound right to the natural ear. Oh my come on now. Come on. It made me move. It 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 it's something it woo that sounded good. That sounded good, uh huh. But to the spiritual, compare spiritual things with spiritual things, you say that didn't sound right because they are not in harmony with God. So now what they're doing and in, in mounting the instrument or even singing a song, hitting a note. Yes, you sound like you sound like it like like a hummingbird. Mm -hmm. However, because you're not in harmony with God, there's no anointing. My God, Bishop. My God. See, here's the thing I've done with my praise team. I have a, I have a wonderful praise team. Uh, yes, they're, you do. They're highly anointed. and uh, But I challenge them that you can't sing what you're not living. Okay. And so, so I don't care how good you sing. I had a young man come to my church, Bishop. He, he could sing like, I mean, he could, he sound like Donnie McClurkin. This okay. guy had a tremendous voice, but he came to me and said, I can help your praise team. Oh, my. He said, uh, I'm a singer. I've sung in New York. I've sung all over. He said, and I can help. You got a good praise team, but I can help him. I said, no, thank you. <laughs> right. And so he came back again and I said, no, thank you. And so right. Debbie finally let him sing one Sunday. And I told that, why did you do that? Well, because he can sing. I said, his place on the praise team, if he want to sing, he got to be in the background. Right. See, I want I wanted to test his humility. Humility. Right. Absolutely. So he's he agreed to that. Aren't I you? left him in the background for two months before I let him sit leave. But that's the first of the virtues. Yes. And that's yes. the main virtue of, of mankind. Humble. Humility. You can sing, but you ain't humble. <laughs> I'm gonna try to help you out. And in the end, he thanked me. Okay. That's he a blessing. Yeah. That's development. That's development. Okay. That's so we as leaders, we got to see that, Bishop. And even as we was going to say, I know we're running out of time, but even in people's homes where they allow music to come into that child's room that's in your house, mm -hmm. and you've given him a space to play what he want to play in his room. Mm -hmm. That spirit is in your house. Yeah. And uh, you have what we call compromised. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told my son, your room is my room. <laughs> I'm subject you to don't have in. no room. I'm subject <laughs> to come in anytime and check everywhere. So you gotta yeah. be careful what you bring in. Miss Ramsey, you must know my mother. She <laughs> said with no privacy in her house and took doors off the hinges. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. Oh my, oh my. So go. listen, as as we're talking about music, you know, we kind of went in there and because we, we love God. And yeah. so we, we did a lot with, with spiritual things, but I want us to um, provoke a conversation amongst people. Um, again, knowing that these, these places of teaching where people are getting their learning from uh, is media, social and, and, and conventional media. Music is a powerful force. We cannot negate how powerful music is. 
You got people that are learned and unlearned out here and they're teaching your teenagers. They're teaching your little children. They're teaching you if you don't know where your source of teaching should come from. The Apostle Paul said, if we don't separate it, if us being in crisis and separate from the things that once alienated us from God, sin, uh, uh, lasciviousness and, and uncleanness and greediness and, and those things. He said, you hadn't learned Christ. Right. So yeah. what are we learning then? He's the word. And that should be our standard. That should be the place that we go to to discern or to determine whether or not this is something I, I want to allow in my life or not allow in my life or something I want to do or not do. OK. Or from whence did this person come, even though they can sing like a, a, a hummingbird or whatever it may be? I want to make sure that you ha they have learned Christ because yeah. we don't want to uh, contaminate. Mm. OK, contaminate. The scripture says in First Corinthians 15, 33, I believe that evil communication corrupts good manners. Right. And so we got to see what, where is all this, this disruption coming from society and begin look for the source. Yes. Look for the sources and, yes. and, and, and stand up in righteousness and, and holiness and, 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 and make Jesus Lord, Savior and Lord and say, I'm going to su submit to your supreme authority, your ways of teaching. OK, and then we're going to do what you told us to do in the Great Commission, teaching those things that I have commanded you. Teaching to teach to teach that's generation to generation to generation. And that is where we begin addressing or confronting the woes of society. We need to know the source of this. There's a lot of things we say that's the devil. Devil said, y'all lying on me. Y'all yeah. lying on me. I had nothing to do with that. You yeah. are allowing these different people that have greed and, 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 and trying to show you how to live something aside from what God wants you to live. I had nothing to do with that. They're the one who have not submitted themselves to God and their flesh is running amok. And, and you've made it popular and you've made it this and, and y'all lying on me. I, I had nothing to do with that. They're the ones that have an unrenewed mind. I haven't had to do anything because you're doing it to yourself. Right. right. You're doing it to yourselves. Is, is that OK? Yeah. And so we got to understand that the Apostle Paul put it like this. Present yourselves as a living sacrifice. You know, we want to split hairs with, well, what is it going to hurt? What yeah. am I teaching? As you said, Bishop Ramsey, is who's watching me. And you said this, Monique, as a leader. It's not about what I can and cannot do. It's what I should do to influence people to do what they need to do. Exactly. Okay. And sometimes, as I said, it, it won't affect me, but it will affect the person that's watching me. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll affect the person that's watching me. And that's called responsibility. And until we accept responsibility, we won't experience God's ability. OK, right. and that's what we've got to rely upon. But you know what that takes, Bishop? Humility. It takes humility. Say that all that I am and all that I'll ever be and all that I have is because of God. That's right. And I'm going to come in total submission to what pleases him and not what pleases my flesh or my desires or what I will to do. OK, what I want to do. OK, in life but I'm going to make sure I live the life that God intended for me to live. That's a choice. That's a decision you got to make, but we want you to know that is a sacrifice, mm -hmm. but you got to, you got to count up the cost. Very much what so. is this costing us? You know, what is it costing us? This, this diversion or diverting from what God expects or what God has, has, has presented to us in the word of God and what he has provided us the ability to become based upon what we want or what some some one else is suggesting to us. What is it costing us? Mm -hmm. What is it costing us? And when we say, do you know what? 
we got to do something different. Right. We got to do something different. When you when you were playing ball, Bishop, and we just got a few moments. If you, I put it like this: you missed the you missed the free throw, and I know you didn't never do this. That could have won the game. Very rarely. <laughs> exactly. Very rarely. But that you say, you know what? This is affecting something greater than me. You would overdo practicing your free throws, wouldn't you? Right. Right. Okay. You would overdo it. Why are we afraid to overdo a thing? And instead, someone will make you feel guilty because you are erring on the side of goodness and holiness and righteousness versus um, just freedom to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, but here's here's the thing that you that's a great point. But here's the thing that most people don't realize: if I miss that free throw and and, and it costs us the game, I don't need nobody to make me feel bad. I feel bad myself because I failed. Okay, I don't like failure. So, okay. it, so the burden comes on me. I don't need nobody to tell me like like Stephanie will have to. You missed that free throw. I know I missed it. <laughs> you know? So okay. the failure called pushes me. So I don't want to fail again. So okay. that's why I practice and practice. So when you do something that's not in line with God, if you don't have that feeling of I failed him, then you ah. will have the impetus to say, I want to do better. I don't want to do that again. OK. And, and we're missing that, Bishop. We're missing that so much in the body of Christ. So so we got to go here. I'm throwing this out now. <laughs> I'm stirring the okay. <laughs> So we got to begin saying, are, we, are some that are saying they're born again, are they born again or not? That's a legitimate question. question. No, because the Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not judging nobody. I'm not doing anything. But I can say from my personal experience, what you just said, Bishop, when I confessed Christ and I was ready to cause him or want him to be Lord of my life, when I missed the mark, Bishop Ramsey, nobody had to tell me, you hear me? I wanted to correct my own behaviors and I wasn't allowing the world and nobody else's opinion exactly. to to push me up to continue what I was doing when I know mm. I had a conviction. Yes. Yes. There, not condemnation. Everybody right. listening. We're not talking about condemnation, but there was a conviction. But until there's been a right spirit created in you through a born again experience, you won't have those convictions. Right. Right. You won't have those convictions. Exactly. Exactly. You won't. And that only comes through confessing Christ. It really does. You think about when when Peter failed, all it took was a look from Jesus. <laughs> oh, my. That's all it took. And he wept bitterly. Mm. You want to know the difference between Judas and Peter? Peter wept and only love can weep. Oh, my. That's that, that, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> Judas never wept. <laughs> So when we start talking about filtering all of this out, it comes down to whether or not we love him. Uh, that's it. That's it. And what are we going to do? Because we love him. Mm -hmm. And he first loved us. He first loved us. Yes, Amen. Sir. That's our time. <laughs> that's our time today. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate no you so much. Heard it, Bishop. Bishop Ramsey, will you pray? Just pray a quick prayer. Yes. Because uh, I believe that we stirred some things today. Yes, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you for being the God that you are. And God, for those who are listening, I pray that something was stirred in them to cause us just to examine our walk with you, God. Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul said, Lord, that he'd been crucified, but now he lives another life. He's talked about the life he now lives. And I pray for everyone that's listening to me that we would consider the life we now live. And is that life pleasing you? May we ever live, may we ever live to please you and not ourselves, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. 
Thank you all for listening. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you, Stephanie, Bishop Ramsey. Um, conversations will continue. We'll be back on next week. And uh, listen, continue to join in. We love you. And when we're done, please share it. You can go out to our YouTube channel as well. You can catch up, see last week's broadcast if you happen to miss it. Okay. And uh, we appreciate you. God bless you. Till next time. Bless you.